Moments ago, we heard from officials in Orlando after a police officer arrested two six-year-old students at their elementary school. Six. One of those students, this little girl, was sent to the office for throwing a tantrum, and then she was placed in handcuffs. CNN's Rosa Flores just listened in to this police news conference. Uh, I don't even... How does this even happen? What, what do they say? I know, Brooke. Well, I'm still trying to process all of this, but let me take you through this. Okay. So um, our affiliate, WKMG, spoke to the grandmother of one of these children. And of course, this grandmother was shocked. Uh, she was upset uh, because she says that the six-year-old girl uh, suffers from sleep apnea and they're trying to get that under control. Meanwhile, on Thursday, she gets a phone call from the little girl's charter school saying that the little girl had had a temper tantrum and that she had been arrested by police. Take a listen. What do you mean she was arrested? Say there was an incident and she kicked somebody. She's arrested and she has a charge. How do you do that to a six-year-old child? Now, the state attorney locally uh, just had a press conference and she confirms that indeed uh, a six-year-old had been uh, arrested and charged, but the state attorney made it very clear that she does not plan to prosecute, saying that instead she's gonna work to drop the charges on this child. Take a listen. There have been outcries for justice, and I want this community to know that I hear you. I also want you to know that when it comes to little elementary age children, we will not negotiate justice ever. Today, the healing can start. I can assure you that there will be no criminal prosecution for a misdemeanor battery for these elementary children in my name or on my watch. Unlike some, I will not presume guilt or dangerousness of a child based upon any demographic. So, Brooke, how did this happen in the first place? According to Orlando police, they have a protocol that any officer that uh, arrests a child under the age of 12 needs to get approval. And apparently in this case, the approval was not obtained. Needless to say, there's an internal investigation going on, according to the police. And for now, the duty, uh, the officer's duties have been suspended. Okay, has been suspended. Rosa Flores, thank you very much. Let's bring in Charles Coleman Jr., civil rights attorney. And you know, you were you were fired up re-emailing about this this morning. And, and thank you so much for coming on. Sure. How do you arrest a six-year-old? I think this is appalling. I am appalled. I think that most people, with their common sensibilities, would be appalled would be appalled by this. But I think that when you talk about the school-to-prison pipeline, this is exactly what we're referring to. We're talking about the criminalization of behavior by minors, by school-aged children in primary education, K through 12, for things that they would normally do. This is normal behavior. So what, a six-year-old had a tantrum. She's a baby, she's a child, this is what happens. But I really need that to, for viewers to understand, to contextualize this in a larger conversation about what is happening across America with respect to schools, involving school resource officers around things that they should not be involved in. School resource officers were put in place to deal with things like mass shootings or gang, gang violence or things of that nature. They're not in place for classroom management. So this is a total aberration on a number of different levels in terms of the misuse of SROs in schools. So just a little bit of background. We were reading about this officer. The officer involved, his name is Dennis Turner. Uh, he's, he was assigned to the reserve officer program. He, he retired. Right. In 2016, he was reprimanded for ex excessive force after he tasered a man five times. Correct. This is all according to the Orlando Sentinel. You heard Rosa say, um, you know, they didn't get the approval. He has been suspended. How does, how does a guy with that kind of background end up working around kids? So there are two issues with that. The first issue is, as you've already indicated, this is not someone who should have ever been in a position, retired or not, to be a school resource officer or safety resource officer with children. That's bar none. When you have an officer who has a history of excessive use of force, that's just not the situation that you want to put this officer in. Not to mention that there were two arrests, that this, two arrests of minors, of six-year-olds that this officer made 
in the same week, right? So we can already understand that this is not someone individually who should be there. But I think that there's an, an important conversation that has to be thrown in the context of larger what's going on in Florida in particular. They have had on a repeated basis for years now a serious problem with students, particularly students of color, mm. being referred to law enforcement. Mm. Florida has approximately 30 percent learners of color, black learners, brown le learners uh, in their school system. Yet of that of that 30 percent, approximately 60 of the referrals to law enforcement co are constituted by black and Latino children. This is a real problem. So even if you want to sort of put this officer to the side and say, well, he was a bad apple in the bunch, mm. this is a systemic issue that needs to be addressed and examined. I appreciate you bringing it to light and wanting to come on and talk to me about it and for being appalled. Uh, Charles Coleman, I am Jr., appalled. I appreciate you very much. Thank you very, Thank very you, much. Coming up next.